So, Gwen, let mm. me let's bring this to Man City. Okay. <laughs> let's bring this to Man City because you see, I want to I want to start with Pep. Yeah. I want to start with Pep Guardiola because see, this is much more my thing with Pep is. I don't want to know what we think about this. I I use the kind of um, this kind. I I kind of like make make a difference between these two concepts: mm-hmm. a manager and a coach. Mm-hmm. And I believe that manager and coach these are two different things. They're not the same thing. And what I want to say about Pep Guardiola is that he is a very very good coach, a really good, good coach, an amazing coach. He's not so much a great manager because you see. A manager is someone who thrives when the going gets tough, when things aren't so good, and a manager has a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D because he's there to manage situations like, all right, this guy's out. We'll change this for information. All right, we're not playing well. Let's try this tactic and just eke out this game. Like Ferguson was a, the king of that. He always knew that no matter what, I can manage this situation. I can create a new team. I can get this player to, to, do, to, to do these other things. I can maximize the, the, the talents of this player. I don't really need the best players. I can maximize them. But for Pep, he has a philosophy. This is how we play. Like, yes, yeah. he has tweaked it a bit from the Barcelona days because I, because you could argue that um, one of his best teams was the Man City 100 points team. Yeah. In terms of how they played, how they dealt with 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 teams, and how they totally destroyed what people consider is the most competitive league, yeah. and again, as I said again, look at what he did with Sterling. Like he is the reason. Like yeah, the player yeah, has to train and everything, but he is the reason why Sterling is at this level because he just taught him a few things of the trade of like runs to make, timing of the runs, how to utilize the, the ball, how to put yourself in specific um, pockets in the area of the pitch. But I just think though that's that when you look at city season and, and so forth, a manager would know that attacks are great, defense are what win win your leagues. Yeah. So as soon as Laporte La went down, we need a new defender. Even before that whole thing, you print by saying that we need to have a strong de- defense. John Stones just isn't up to that level. Otamendi yeah. is injury prone. Fernandinho is not a natural central yeah. defender. So he should have said, said, okay, we must all, you know, I know I've got the attack, I know I've got the amazing attack, but we have to have a strong defense. I mean, when we get to Leroy Sane afterwards, but yeah. what is your view? Do you believe I'm right or wrong in saying that Pep, not so great a manager, but a much better coach and management is maybe what is his weak point? Well, I agree with a lot what, of what you said, but I would say that he is both a good manager and a good coach, but a better coach than he is a manager. Because manager, you know, the first word, the root word, man, management. Yeah. So when it, when, when it comes to man management, it's like dealing with the whole Sane situation a lot better. I think since the 2018 World Cup when Sane was snubbed by Germany, that Sane should have been involved a lot more. For City should have got way more starts than he did, and that frustrated the player. I know you said we'll get to Sane, but Pep Guardiola, he is a man that's he want to stick to his philosophy. Yesterday, Mendy, we were beating Liverpool off the park, but Mendy somewhat run from the he ran from the left side with almost to the right side of the field with the ball, and Pep was furious because that's not the style of football he plays. You don't hold on to the ball that long. Get the ball away. You have the ball. You look for a man, pass the ball. You move. Look for the ball again. Mendy, he was dribbling. He did a great, and he almost made a mistake. Imagine if that led to a goal and Liverpool came back and drew the game. Because it could happen. Mm. So I agree with what you say. Like Pep Guardiola, he wants to stick to something. And a lot of times, if that plan does not work, we lose the game. But the majority of the time, it works. Yeah, It works. And it works because um, of the, 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 the beautiful football that, that City play and the players that he has at his disposal. It would have worked this season, even if we lost eight times, but Liverpool were just better. They, if Liverpool were losing eight times, like we, we are losing, it would have been a title race. But they were just exceptional. You know what I'm saying? So we can't be overly critical of what City did this season as well, even though we, we can be critical, but not overly critical. 
because we are way ahead of third and we are way ahead of second. Um, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. We're way ahead of these teams. We're about 10 points, 11 points ahead of them. So we can't be overly critical. We just have to give Liverpool the praises for what they have done. Okay, so, so cool, because again, because I want to bring in the Champions League at Man City, but I want to go to Leroy Sane. So this is what I've always said about the whole Leroy Sane thing. He was always going to leave. He knows, because again, remember, we're living in a world of social media and yeah. players because social media. So players are very aware about what the world thinks of them. So Leroy Sane would know that, we, we, even before Leroy Sane goes on social media, he would know that, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty good. I think yeah. I'm, I'm skilled. Then if you go on social media and guys are like, wait, why is Sane on the bench? Why is he on the bench? Yeah. Why is he not playing? And Sane will be like, wait a minute. Yeah. I know I'm good. Mm -hmm. The people online are saying I'm, I'm good. Why am I on the bench? And this is what I've always said. Leroy Sane is a more talented, dangerous footballer than Sterling. But Raheem Sterling is much more of a pep player. Mm -hmm. Because Raheem Sterling is excellent at listening and adhering to instructions. I was but thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same. Yeah, Sane is but, a little bit more rebellious. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you see, Leroy Sane, see, Leroy Sane is the, see, if I was a manager, Leroy Sane is the kind of player that I like. Where this is a blueprint. But... We've all played football before. If that blueprint isn't working, interpret the game, do something. Yeah. You have agency to try and win me the game as an individual. And Leroy Sane can take it upon himself to be like, you know what? Let me just carry this ball through. Let me weave through and let me just take 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 a shot. Exactly. Sterling wouldn't necessarily because Sterling would look at okay, what's the pass? What's the pass? What's the pass? What's 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 the giving go? What's the run? So I think there are times in which Pep will be like, no, 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 no. You're going to away from the paradigm and, and the in, in instruction. Exactly. Let's stay here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think the thing with Sane is that look, like Hansi Flick from Ban, he called it. He said, mm. I want you. <laughs> we have a number saved for you. Yeah. So when a player says, so so when a player, if the manager calls you personally, says we have a number specifically for you as well. And you see, the thing about it is that. Hans Flick isn't, isn't stupid. And, and look at how Bayern Munich play. Yes, they have a system and so forth, but I think there's a little bit of a freedom mm. for guys to express themselves in Bayern as opposed to um, Pep. Because in, in Pep, he's a micromanager because you can always tell. The manager, let's see, Pep is like Conte. Or like similar way, like the manager that's at the touchline, always thingy, he's micromanaging. But when you look at An Ancelotti, you look at um, any of these other dudes who they rarely are at the touchline. They just say, look, I've given you instructions. Go, Go do your thing. Yeah, yeah. Those guys are, are different. So do you... Would you have wanted Pep and City to fight more to keep Leroy Sane and maybe manage the playing time better between him and Sterling? Or it is well, what it is. Sterling is just much more of a Pep player than Sane would ever be. Okay. My take on this is... It's hard. It's difficult. How are you going to drop Sterling? You know what I'm saying? And Sane is somewhat of an understudy to Raheem Sterling. So Sane basically takes that role, but he's not happy with the role. Sterling won't be happy with the role, and he's too good to keep on the bench. Then you have the headache of Mares. He's too good to keep on the bench on a consistent basis. Then you have the headache of Bernardo, who is a bit more compliant, who is a bit more, you know what I mean? He'll work with you more and play different positions and come off the bench. Yeah, he's he's that type of player. He's Pep's kind of player. But Sane is a rebel. Look at the man's face. Look at just the attitude. You know, you can tell just like he's just the, his pouting and everything. His, yeah, you can, you, tell, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell. And if you watch the way Sane plays, and you mentioned it, Sane holds on to the ball longer than any other City player, maybe with the exception of Riyad Mahrez. But Sane is an individual type of player who's going to want to take things on his own and make it happen. And he has done it in the past. But, you know, it's like a kid when you're like, yo, man, stop doing that. Stop doing that. You, something's going to happen. But they keep doing it. But then they end up and they surprise you and do something exceptional. But you still, it's not your philosophy. It's like, yo, I told you to stop. I know you're doing well, but stop doing that. After a time, it's like that player is going to blossom so much that it's going to be hard to, to hold him down. Because if you have Sterling, who's keep, he's keep get, he's getting better and better and better. Maris is getting better. You have De Bruyne, you have all these guys. You have It's hard. You have Foden coming through. 
Sane is like, look, look, Bayern is over there. On their wings, they're using Perisic, who's been playing for God knows when. Mm. You have Coleman always injured. You have Gnabry, who could uh, play on the other side. If they call me and they say, listen, we have the number for you. We want you. You're from Germany. You wanted mm. to play for Bayern Munich when you, were, you, you, you came out of the, um, the uterus anyway. And... Son is, is a no brainer. He's gonna start. He's gonna start for no, Bayern. No, 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 because the thing that like, you mentioned Perisic, who hasn't really worked, but the king thing is Kingsley Coman. Mm. Kingsley Coman just hasn't grabbed onto that position. So Sani knows that this isn't a Raheem Sterling situation. Exactly. He knows that Kingsley Coman just hasn't really set the world alight because Sterling, you could argue. In those previous two, because I said that you could make an argument that Sterling should have maybe been an argument for the Ballon d'Or based on his contribution to a hundred point season. He was, yeah, he, yeah. he was key. So Perisic isn't doing that. Coman isn't doing that. And Coman just, just hasn't been able to stamp it on that position. So Sani knows that I am going there as a marquee player. And also Hansi Flick knows that the future of Germany, mm. German national football is Janambri on the right. Exactly. And um, and Leroy Sane on the left. That, that is what is going to be used for yeah. for, for Germany. So Bayern Munich are like giving Germany a framework of what is going to be there for the next five six years. So he knows that. Exactly. I, I think look, it's the it's the right move. I can't be selfish with this. I'm mad. I'm mad, but I can't be selfish. It's what's best for the players. Sane is my favorite City player. Or oh, he was. He's no longer with the club, and I'm pissed off that. Pep did not make the man happy enough because he would have stayed. He would have stayed on. Okay, okay, wait, but let's so let's okay. Put yourself in Pep's shoes. Mm. You know that Sterling is doing exactly what you want. Yeah, it's different, and he's also producing because see, that's what for me. I used to get mad at Pep. I said, wait a minute, let me just put myself in Pep's shoes now. Mm. How do you make Sane happy enough to stay? Because Sterling is doing what I want him to do. Yeah. And he's being very effective indeed. So, because see, the, the key thing is the first point. I have a philosophy, which isn't my philosophy, because I would always go for a Leroy Sane, and I would always um, ride with, with how Leroy Sane goes. No offense to Sterling, because, because Sterling is, is a top player, but yeah. I'm more of what Leroy Sane is about. But then, if you're Pep, and you put yourself in Pep's shoes, you're like, this dude is doing what I'm doing. So it was almost as if like this was always going to happen because you just had a situation where Sani and Sterling, they're fighting for the same position. Yeah. Because forget about the right side, like Leroy Sani is an inside forward. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, well, okay, actually, no. Now I'm, I'm thinking about it. Look at how Leroy Sani plays. Yes, he can play as a winger. He can also play as an inside forward. Because he's well, left he hasn't played a lot as an inside forward. That's the thing. But you see, that's the thing that is that Maris is quality. He is, and I think I really love the way yeah. that, that, that that guy plays. And I always and I've always said that Maris might be technically the best African player in terms of just natural technical ability. But um that could have been a thing about okay, you know, because Maris is, is in and out, you know, but someone's in and out. How about I put him in there? But you know, even the, beyond that, the it is tough competition. Yeah, the yeah. competition is very tough. And, and that's always a good thing. But if you're Ilora Sane, yeah, you want competition to keep you on your heels and so forth, but you also want to play. And I think that, you see, maybe you could have, it may be right in the sense of that, was he even given enough opportunities? Because look at it. Remember that game against Liverpool um, last season, Etihad? That was a yeah. cold finish. Came that was off a cold the finish. And that was a finish that right? gave him the title. He came off the bench, right, didn't he? I think I think he did. Change, I think yeah, he did. change the game. That's what look, and that's what Sane is capable of doing. It's, it's a devastating play on the wings. What I have a question, I'm not sure, but didn't wasn't um Germany Yoki Love using Gnabry and Sane up top in one game, if I'm not mistaken. He he might he, have I mean in the because I, remember, I watched in those Netherlands games, I believe they were both wide, and I can't, I think did he have Max Cruiser? I mean, I'm sure someone in the comments. Oh, I, 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 Cruiser, Max Cruiser. As a striker. I don't think it was Cruiser. I don't think so. He but in there, I'm sure. But what I'm saying though, Sane, as you said, he, he could be used as an inside forward. 
who knows? Maybe he should have gotten more opportunities as an as a as a as a center forward for City off the bench. Who knows? Who knows? You know what I mean? And I think that's a position that we're struggling in right now. The the, the forward position. Look at look at G Jesus. Look at Gabriel Jesus. Like <laughs> since restart, this guy hasn't scored a thing. He hasn't done anything. So there's questions over him too. But before the restart. He was doing really before the, the the um the break. He was doing really well. So do you, do you know my thing about Jesus? That's what I said about because I I've been look looking at him all, all the way through. I don't think that Pep is the right manager for Jesus because in Jesus I see a potentially potentially really top striker. But I think because Pep has a very specific system and he wants his strikers to do very specific things, I don't yeah. think Jesus is allowed to really express himself. Yeah, so I true. think Jesus in a much more attacking team, offensive team, where he can dribble more, he can move yeah. more on the ball, he can move, move around a lot more. Because again, Jesus, he the guy has a lot of ability, which we just yeah. don't don't see. Exactly. You know, but 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 I think again, it's like so let so even veering off right now, because you know, this is what I've said, and people have called me crazy. I believe that, and maybe we could, this can be a jump off for getting into a bit of Champions League talk. Mm. I think that City are are one of the strong favorites to win the Champions League, you know. And my thing is that you know that's good. that game against Real Madrid is going to be huge. That's going to be a huge game because Real Madrid are playing yeah. really, really well. But yeah. I think that City have their eyes very, very focused on the trophy. Mm. Now we can't ignore. We'll obviously talk about Bayern Munich. We we'll obviously mm -hmm. talk about Juventus and and so and Christian and Mo Sarah thing. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? I mean, what are your thoughts about that City Real Madrid game up to one two away goals? Do you think that is a very strong position that it makes it very hard for Real Madrid to now turn that around? Because Real Madrid are doing really well. I just yeah. don't see. Because I just think that City there is but, a real urgency to like we have to win it. Look, Real already have won it already, so. It's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing because there's two cities. There's a city that could come out come out there and, and blow Real Madrid away or even pick up a draw, win the tie. But there's also the city that could self-destruct, that could implode. Oh, you stole the word from my mouth, yeah. Yeah, that could implode and have us all in awe, have all of our jaws dropped, be like, God, it happened again, you know? But what they did, what they did at the Bernabeu was just simply amazing. To get two goals there and defeat them, not even a draw, but to defeat them, it makes you believe. But it's a long road ahead. The Champions League, the former changing, it's a long road ahead. So the first thing we need to do is get past Real Madrid, who are in very good form. I was going to mention that, but you did. They're in very good form. They, they, they have leapfrog Barcelona four points ahead of them right now. I don't watch a lot of La Liga, but I, I, I keep my ears open. I keep my ears open, and I don't watch La Liga because I don't have the subscription. I don't have BN Sports that covers it. I could find other ways, but most times there's a Premier League match showing at the same time. So mm -hmm. you know, the Premier League no, no, is, it, it, it's hard to yeah. schedule the stuff. Exactly. That's my bread and butter. No, 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 Real Madrid is like, look, I mean, they are doing well and they are playing well, but you know, I've always said that I never understood them letting go of, of Chris Cristiano. That didn't make any sense. Now, the thing about that, though, is that them letting go of Cristiano helped to show us that, oh, this Benzema is actually pretty good, <laughs> you know, because when Cristiano was there, Benzema was just there to facilitate. Cristiano. So he was just there as like a fall and a decoy. He, he played that role really well, but you were a decoy for the main goal scorer, Cristiano. But now that Cristiano has now gone, Benzema is like, oh, like, this guy can drop deep. He can create. He's good in the ball. He can play make and he can score as well. And he can be the top scorer. So we're seeing a guy who is so multi talented, but we never saw all these talents when he was given a specific, much more restricted role for thinking. Hence why guys are now saying that, well, if Real Madrid win La La Liga, and let's just say they go far in the Champions League, can this guy be a Ballon d'Or candidate? Because see, for me, my thing is that you can't be a Ballon d'Or candidate yeah. without doing really well in the Champions League. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, that's, that's it's impossible. So, so, to interject a bit, right, um, 
Benzema is very, very underrated, and he has just emerged from the shadows of Cristiano Ronaldo, which every player wants to do, wants to come out of the shadow of another big player. And, you know, you got to be happy for him. But he is kind of facing the whole, I just saw something, the sex scandal thing. He has to take the stand or something for that. I don't know if you saw that. I think mm. it's the whole situation with him and Valbuena that happened a long time ago. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Him, um, outcasted from the French national team. The man could have been a World Cup winner, but all, you know, decisions in the past, you know. But since we're on the topic, of we, we're champions. I don't want to jump around too much. I want to finish off what I have written down here too. We have, we're talking about Champions League. I think City could get past Real Madrid, but we have to just keep our focus, concentrations, levels really, you know, up there and get past Real Madrid. 